Thank you, Rodolf, and indeed, thank you, all our readers, this morning. St. Paul was writing in that last reading to the Christians um, in Rome, but uh, most of the Roman world at that point was not Christian, and the Romans had other gods. One of the Roman gods was called Janus. And the distinctive thing about Janus was that he had two heads, one to look forward and one to look backwards. He could look forwards and backwards at the same time. And as we start this new church year, as we come to this Advent Sunday, the first Sunday of our year, it's good to look backwards as well as looking forwards. As we look back, what do we see? It's been a momentous year, hasn't it? Not really in a good way. A year that we won't easily forget. As we recall the coronavirus, COVID-19, and the devastation that it has brought and still is bringing across our world. But maybe as we ponder uh, 2020 in the years to come, we will also see good things. The community spirit and the way that people have helped out each other and looked out for each other is an obvious thing. And I hope it will continue. It's good to look back as we come to a new year. We also want to look forward and Advent is particularly a time for looking forward, especially as we celebrate again in a few weeks' time the birth of Jesus. Jesus, the light of the world. And light is a central theme of Advent and of our service today. In John's Gospel, Jesus is referred to 21 times as the bringer of light. And indeed, we know he described himself as the light of the world. He also says that his followers should be bringers of light. You are the salt of the earth, he says. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before people that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We are called on to be bringers of light. Now, there are many things we could say about light, but I want to say just one this morning, and it's this, that light attracts. We all know, don't we, if we leave a window open late in summer, as it gets dark, then the house will be full of moths and bugs and other flying things. Even the other day, we had in our kitchen a great big black beetle. And it was really interesting because on this beetle, there were other little um, insects crawling around. I don't know if it was some sort of symbiotic relationship, but they seem to be living on the beetle. Anyway, we put the beetle back outside where it belonged. Earlier in the year in our churchyard here in Burghclere, twice in fact, um, a couple of people who are interested in moths came and lit their moth lamp after dark. And they caught hundreds, literally, of moths in our churchyard. And on the first time, I remember in particular, 43 different types of moth. All because they lit their light and the moths were attracted to it. Light is attractive. And Jesus says that we should be lights in the world. We are called to be attractive for God, attracting others by the good things we do to come to God and to know him 
for themselves. And so as we look back on the year just gone, the question for us surely is, have we been the cause of others thanking God in this past year? Have we, by the things we've done and said, attracted others to God and to his kingdom? Because that is what he calls us to do. And as we look ahead to this coming year, so we must ask ourselves the question, will we be bringing light into the world of others? Will we be changing the world for good? Will we be making a difference by shining for him? Let's ask him that indeed we would. Lord, we pray, help us to shine for you that others may come to know your love. We pray this in your name. Amen.